welcome back to our program. Tom Hartman here with you. On the line with us is uh, the guy that I thought should be our attorney general. <laughs> and he's doing an, an amazing uh, uh, course, basically, uh, uh, an American government course and, and history course uh, that you can find over on YouTube. He's been doing it, you know, as reading it into the into the record in, in the U.S. Senate. Uh, Sheldon Whitehouse, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, uh, a Democrat from Rhode Island. Uh, Sen Whitehouse is his Twitter handle and the, web, the website, of course, whitehouse.senate.gov. Senator Whitehouse, uh, welcome back to the program. It's been, it's been quite a while. Um, you did a, a deep dive in one of your scheme exposés of Brett Kavanaugh. And I think that now that we are, you know, there, there have been some conversations about uh, revisiting the things that happened during the Trump administration, particularly like FBI investigations, bring us up to speed on what's the, what the story is with, with uh, Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh right now. So things looked um, pretty hinky when the FBI investigation was taking place into the allegations made by Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. Um, and in the midst of that stampede, uh, a number of us asked a bunch of questions about what the FBI investigation had actually amounted to. And then we went through a very frustrating period during the Trump administration when we couldn't get a single answer out of Chris Ray and the FBI and the Department of Justice. And at the same time, we were watching the FBI and Chris Ray and the Department of Justice feed information through a fast lane to our Republican colleagues to investigate a crossfire hurricane, the Trump-Russia investigation. So clearly they were capable of getting us the information if they'd wanted to, and they were being very selective. So when President Biden got elected and Attorney General Garland came in, we put new renewed pressure on for answers, um, and this time we didn't get blown off, uh, but we got what I would call a smidgen of an answer, which did one important thing. It confirmed that the tip line that they had set up when their effort to fend off any and all information about Brett Kavanaugh was not going to be sustainable. They had to let some information in, so they let it in through a tip line. And what they've admitted is that they did not follow FBI tip line procedures in fact, they took all the information that came through the tip line and ran it over to Don McGahn at the White House Counsel's Office, where, of course, it did not get investigation. And, uh, you know, that was the end of that. It was basically a tip dump, not a tip line. And um, so now we need to press further to figure out, you know, what they did do and what they didn't do. Their other argument, if you don't mind me going on for one second longer, is Please that... Please feel free. They... Um, were actually following FBI procedures when they did all this stuff. And what they meant by that was that when the FBI is doing a background investigation, it's the political tool of the White House and does what the White House tells it, and that's what they mean by the way of procedure. Hmm. So what they're saying is that we were following the procedure of not following our procedure. Right. But if you dig behind that, you know, the FBI is a very procedure-run institution. And I am confident that they have procedures for how you run background investigations, because they do this all the time. So we want to dig through those procedures, because there's every reason to believe that they didn't follow those procedures either. I think this was the first time in the history of FBI background investigations where the White House took operational control over an FBI background investigation and created a fake one to give the appearance of an investigation without actually doing real investigating. Right, which raises a whole bunch of questions, and I don't know if in the whole in bunch. roughly seven minutes we've got left before we hit a hard break, we can get to them all. But uh, number one, why is Chris Ray still running the FBI if this is the story? Number two, will there be a thorough investigation of, of Mr. Kavanaugh? Number three, um, it, w could that lead to a possible impeachment of him from the Supreme Court? Um, you know, as a starting point, <laughs> let's just begin with those. Number one, uh, because I don't appoint the FBI director. Right. Um, number two, um, I think that the focus of the investigation in the first instance need to be on, on the mischief that the FBI got up to mm -hmm. and the direction that they got from the White House about this and how unusual and perhaps even unique this was in the annals of the uh, FBI. And once we've gotten a really good, clear understanding of 
how and why the FBI took a dive the way it did, um, then we can make you know further decisions. But that's the touch point that comes up next, is to understand what the FBI did and why they did it and how they violated their own procedures. Do you know yet, does Congress yet know, I mean, you're, you're part of the committee that has oversight for this, uh, who paid off the, the several hundred thousand dollars of debt that Brett Kavanaugh had when he was uh, nominated for the Supreme Court that, uh, that some suggest was gambling debt. He said it had to do with sports tickets, I guess. Um, does anybody know we, where this money came from? Nope. Nope, we still do not know that. Um, part of the signaling out of this whole episode of the power of the dark money forces that were pushing Kavanaugh so hard onto the court is that basic questions like, where did that debt go, didn't get properly or clearly answered, and the Republicans controlling the Judiciary Committee were happy with um, delayed and half-baked and incomplete answers that leave this a question to this moment that we have to talk about still now. Which, which raises the, the question, what was so important about Brett Kavanaugh? And, you know, I mean, why would they fight so hard for him when, when, when they had Robert Bork, you know, back during the Reagan era, when it became obvious that he was going to be problematic? They just dropped him and replaced him with I think Scalia. I mean, I may be wrong, but they, they replaced him with another right-wing justice. I mean, it's not like there's a shortage of them. Yeah, but um, Kavanaugh had a um, unique angle on all of this. He had run judicial nominations in the Bush White House. He knew Leonard Leo, who's the sort of central spider in the web. The head of, of the Federalist Society. Capture organizations. He was, I think, the vice president of the Federalist Society, but he was the head of the court capture operation that was housed within the Federalist Society, and he had always been the link for the big right-wing donors who sought control over the judicial process. So when Trump said the Federalist Society is where I'm going to go to get my judges, he was the man at the turnstile who controlled who got to be a judge, and Kavanaugh knew him, and he also knew what the big donors wanted because he'd played in that space. So he'd spent his time on the uh, D.C. Circuit auditioning on all the key issues that the big donors would be excited by. And then, of course, he'd done, I think, 27 different Federalist Society visits as he auditioned through that organization. Uh, you might be interested to know, he wasn't even on the original Federalist Society list of judges. Right. He auditioned himself entirely around that list and to the top of the pile. So the, the donor group that is behind this court capture operation was particularly infatuated with Brett Kavanaugh. That's fascinating. Um, and and, and you know, there were some indications that when he was working in the Bush White House that he was involved with the torture memos and stuff like that. Do we, did we ever learn that if that was or was not the case? What we got out of his uh, White House days was mostly huge stacks of paper that were blank <laughs> and that were stamped constitutional privilege on them. Is there such they a didn't thing? Even have, well, that's it. They didn't even have the gall to say executive privilege because they knew it had neither met the legal nor process requirements for an executive privilege assertion. So they just stamped blank pages constitutional privilege, sent them in by the ream, and knew perfectly well that the Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee were going to turn a blind eye to all of that and let them let it stand. Right. So back to a, a question I, I, I think I asked earlier that, you know, is this going to be our, I realize you're, 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 you're trying to get answers from the FBI, but um, a formal investigation that may lead to even an impeachment investigation. Do you do you consider that a possibility or is that something that it's just way pre, too premature to even discuss? too premature to even discuss. And when you consider what the Republicans were willing to swallow in uh, impeachments of Trump, mm -hmm. um, and when you consider that the funding group behind the Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Barrett appointments is basically the funding group behind the Republican Party, the idea that you'll get Republicans to vote to impeach Brett Kavanaugh under essentially any circumstance, I think, is, 
zero. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have just about 20 seconds left. How powerful is the Federalist Society? You know, it's a mix. There's a part of it that's a student group. There's a part of it that's a think tank. But this operation that turnstiled three judges onto the United States Supreme Court and stopped a fourth, stopped Merrick Garland, has changed the trajectory of the country for those dark money donors who have hid behind the Judicial Crisis Network and the Federalist Society Anonymous. And we still uh, don't know who they are. Still don't know who they are or what business they had before the court. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island, you are doing God's work, sir. Thank you so much for dropping by today. And keep it, keep it up, Thanks, please. Thanks, Tom. A pleasure. Yeah, good talking with you. We will good be, talking with you. Thank you. We will be back with more of the news of the day and your calls right after this. Stick around. It's 27 minutes past the hour here on the Tom Hartman Program, uh, the place where we ask, uh, you know, is Walmart really a person? And we dare to say no. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-808-9925. Well, it looks like Brett Kavanaugh probably won't get impeached, but hey, let's find out what's actually going on here, huh?